Okay, as you can see, I've been uh, cutting a flute body, and uh, the way I do that is I use something called a roughing gouge. That's what it looks like. And you'll notice that these parts are pretty flat, so they're a straight edge, and this part is curved in between the two straight edges. So what I do is I offer it up flat, but then tilt it back slightly, so that the straight edge is at an angle to the wood. And the reason for that is that if you offer it up straight, you're going to gouge a line at that sharp edge there. If you offer it at an angle, it'll cut deep here, and the wood will transition onto the cutting edge rather than just hit it and also it will transition away from the cutting edge as it's angled away from the wood so you end up with a nice easy smooth cut and you can move it along at that same angle without too much difficulty you rest it on the tool rest and move it along and it cuts a nice even bevel off the corners like this. Now here you transition inwards as you go forwards so so that you don't end up with a sharp edge here like this. So you cut inwards with the curved part there again with the straight edge angled slightly away from the wood and then you move along like this and you cut just a little bit off at a time you have to be really patient because if you cut, try and cut too much you'll gouge into the wood and if you gouge into the wood you'll stop it and it will either depending on whether you're using a proper lathe or like this a, a modified drill with a, an extended piece it will either snatch your tool out of your hand and smack you in the face or it'll just stop the wood and leave a nasty deep cut that you're then going to have to repair so what I'm going to do is now show you uh, you won't be able to hear me because the noise is too much, but I'm now going to show you how it looks when you're cutting the wood. You can see the edge there. So you inwards like this. And then along. So you, you see at this end I'm angling this way and then as I get to this end I can't go any further like that because it butts up against here so I have to angle back inwards until the cutting edge is flat to the wood and that way I cut right to the end here. That means that this bit has a tendency to get slightly deeper so what you have to do is just be careful that only once in a while do you go to the end and cut that way so that you're not making a thin portion of a flute wall here. I'm going to carry on and do that now and show you a bit more. Put my ear defenders back on.
happens when you just go a little bit deep with the cut with the sharp pointy edge of the tool. It cuts a little line that's a little deeper than the rest. I mean this is only a quarter of a millimeter deeper than the rest. So about uh, a sixteenth deeper. But if you allow that to continue and cut it, it it'll drag itself in deeper so you end up with a, a cut that could easily go through the wall and then the flute flaps about and does all sorts of nasty stuff and could cause you an injury not to mention destroying the flute so what you have to do is as soon as you see that line appear as you cut take the tool away and then start again or take the tool back from where the line appeared and start again with an angled blade so I'm going to demonstrate that now to round now however you see that flat portion there I tap put my hand just lightly onto the surface of the flute as it was spinning because then you can feel if it's flat if it's flat you just feel smooth contact if it's not flat you feel pa -pa 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 against your hand that's how you know that you still need to do a little cutting now as that tap 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 gets lighter and lighter you're gonna have to stop more often in order to see where the flat spots are. So you can see I've got a slightly flatter spot on this side than I have on this side. And these parts are almost completely rounded.
very slight flat portion there. I couldn't really feel that while it was spinning. <coughs> so I had to stop and look. Now the reason that I'm stopping and looking so carefully is because this flute is only just thicker than the bore. So I've got very little room to play with in terms of how much bore I get regarding uh, the thickness of the wall. So if I cut too much I end up with a wall so thin that it's flexible and that makes the flute easy to damage and if I cut too little I still end up with a flat spot so I've got a very fine margin between too much and too little. <coughs> Plus of course you want to make it as smooth as possible as in not wider and thinner down the bore so you have to try and be as accurate as you can in cutting it. I've noticed there's a slightly fatter spot there than there is here so I need to level that up somewhat. In the meantime I'm just going to do some hoovering and uh, and then we'll start again. Okay there we go nice clean workbench again. I'm going to carry on and get rid of this little flat spot there. completely rid of the uh, flat spots now. There might be a slightly fatter portion there so I need my caliper to figure out whether it's got a fat spot. 32.4 so do you know what half a mil across that piece of uh, flute I think is acceptable margins I'm quite happy with that plus I'm now going to sand it which is what the next thing I was going to tell you I've got some sandpaper here made by JCB which is rows of plastic material with gaps in between that pick up the sand the uh, sawdust and that makes it uh, quite easy to clean you just tap it and all the sawdust comes out but you do have to be careful to keep the rows across the direction of sanding so when you're sanding don't do it this way with the rows going the same way as the sanding otherwise you'll end up with grooves in your uh, in your piece so always across the way and all I do is turn it on and grit I believe and that's brought a nice smooth finish to the, uh, the piece
piece of flute body. The next thing we're going to do is move the tool rest up the flute to cut this square piece and I'll show you how you start the cutting. Okay so I've moved the tool rest across and I've repositioned the camera so that it can see and you'll notice I've positioned the tool rest really really close to the uh, corners of the flute but I've also spun it to make sure that the corners never hit the, f the uh, tool rest because that could cause a whole world of pain. Now you'll notice as well that it's really straight. I've tried not to angle the tool rest like this or like this at all. It's as straight as I can get it. Um, that's just simply to make uh, traversing the tool in the right direction a lot easier. Now when we start cutting with our roughing gouge we start with the curved edge along here like that and the reason for that is because it smooths out the transition of the corner onto the blade. If you do this it snatches at the blade so all we do is we knock off the original the initial corners with the curved part of the blade and then we start using the angle technique I told you about before so let's have a look at that. So that's about enough I think. That's going to make the transition of the tool a lot smoother when we start using the flattened edges. You'll also notice that while the piece is spinning the corners here and here look fuzzy. That's because you're seeing that where the corner is close to the tool rest and then that where the corner is far away from the tool rest and then that again. So that's too fast for your eyes, so all your eyes see is a fuzzy edge. The closer you get to circular, the sharper that edge will become, and that's a good gauge for you to, to work while you're working, see how far you've got. Let's carry on. to keep your working area as clean as you can just because it builds up and gets in the way and uh, starts to interfere with the operation of the machine so as you can see we're making progress a little wider here which means that this corner is further out than the other corners and a little narrower here which means the opposite corner to there is a little further in so you just have to be aware that you're not always going to get perfectly square positioning in the lathe.
Now you'll notice as well now I've got a little bit of backlash in the lathe position so just need to tighten up the tailstock to take out that backlash. You have to be careful not to tighten too far because even though I've got masking tape on the end of the flute, if you tighten up too far it's going to split that glued seam. It'll push in and part it which means that your flute will then basically need a lot of work to get it back to where it should be. Okay, and reposition the camera slightly and carry on working. Notice when I'm cutting here towards the end of the portion I've done already, I'll run right off the end. I'll keep the, the tool straight, but I'll run right off the end. That's because eventually we're going to get to the point where this flat spot is gone and we're cutting right onto there. So if I carry on running off the end, at the crucial point, this whole thing is going to disappear. This whole step is going to disappear. So. You'll also notice that I've turned the tool round once or twice and as I've got to this end I've rolled it back to there simply because this edge is now starting to get a little blunter than this edge because I've been using it more but if I run to the end I'm going to end up with a sharp sharp edge here and I don't want that, I want that, that sort of beveled edge so that I can run off the end like I do here and so that I don't end up with an impossible to fix gouge in this end so if I'm going to use this edge that's fine but I have to roll it back to the curved edge as I get to the end here and that's okay so long as you keep the tool in the same position with respect to the piece no moving in and out sharp enough. So here we go. So now I can't feel any flat spots at all and visual inspection bears out. I've just got a very tiny extension of this flat area here onto there but 
but uh, that is not going to be a problem because I'm going to do this section here very next just by moving the tool rest again and uh, starting again from scratch but I do feel that it's slightly thinner there than it is here so let me have a check with the caliper yeah, 32.4 as the minimum and that's 31.4 so I've, I've dropped in a millimeter there but I've had to to get rid of the flat spots so check for end float there's nothing doing there so what I can do is I can chop down a millimeter from this half a little later when I'm doing final finishing and in the meantime hoovering moving the tool rest and do the top part zigzags and then stuck together with rivets and on one side you've got a really coarse hacksaw blade and on the other side you've got quite a fine hacksaw blade and basically what it does is the most incredible thing you've ever seen a rasp normally a normal sort of file rasp would take something like 20 minutes to get rid of this but this is going to take a couple of minutes and let me show you I'm exerting almost no pressure here I'm just gently moving the file backwards and forwards across the body of the flute and look at that already coming into my phone, please ignore.
now we've done the uh, the worst part of it so let's switch to the fine side Again, not putting any pressure on here, I'm just gently sliding the bar backwards and forwards, cutting on the forward stroke. And that is that side done. Let me just get the camera and show you a little more close up what has happened here. That's how it looked. And that's how it looks now. Shinto Rasp. Most impressive tool I have ever used. So now having got the shape where we want it, we just need to use a file to... Uh, even up the surface. At the moment it's got lots of scratches on it from uh, from the rasp so just need to use a file to get rid of all the scratches and the gouges and the lines that the rasp left behind. There won't be too many of them it's just a case of uh, tidying it up a bit making it look a little nicer so that when you come to sand it you're not having to sand for weeks to get rid of all the tooling marks. This is a medium file I'm using now. I wouldn't use a second cut because it just takes ages to do the same thing. And uh, once you've used a medium file, you're going to have to sand anyway, so you might as well start with a rough grade sandpaper such as 80 or 120. And uh, it comes up just as nice. trying to keep the motion of the file as straight down the length of the file as I can simply because if you do that you end up with lines these grooves in the file cut lines down the flute and they're very difficult to get rid of by sanding so try and move the file straight forwards and backwards to prevent that happening Okay, so now we've got a nice round shape, a nice flat nest. Did this on the lathe as well. It's straight, and there's a little bit extra at the end where the masking tape was. Um, it's currently playing a, a low F. And I want an F sharp, so that's fine to have that bit of extra there because it's going to get cut off anyway.